Right now, we're going to talk about training frames in Analyzer, specifically how to create good ones to maximize your efficiency and tracking accuracy while using the software. I'm going to go over how many training frames you need to make, where to put them, and how to create them to ensure the best tracking results possible. The first issue, and the most common question, is how many training frames are needed in a shot. The answer, unfortunately, isn't really cut and dry. It can vary greatly between shots. Remember that training frames are made on unique and significant poses. Therefore, you could have a 100 frame shot where the actor is talking quickly or yelling or something similar, so you might have 20 or 30. On the other extreme, you might have a 5,000 frame shot where the actor doesn't move their mouth at all and you need three, which is the minimum for the software to work. This shot in front of me is about 1,000 frames long and I have 16 training frames for the mouth. You do, however, want to use as few training frames as you can get away with. The real key, and this moves us to our second point, is where the training frames are made. Again, take a look at this shot in front of me now. Specifically, as I go to the mouth, these two training frames here. As I said, we want as few training frames as we can get to track the shot accurately. And the idea behind the training frames is that by making them on the most extreme examples of a shape, Analyzer can do the math and work out the results in between those shapes. So for this smile, the current frame, we would be scrubbing around, we'd see it and say, okay, there's a smile, that's a unique shape. Therefore, we should make a training frame on it. So we'll go closer to that and scrub around it and say, okay, on this frame, she's smiling the most. Her smile is the biggest. It's the most extreme example of that smile. So I made a training frame here. Similarly, this closed mouth shape is on a frame where her mouth is completely closed and her lips are slightly pursed. So they're pushed together more than they might normally be. So when we train, the software knows what this smile looks like, and it knows what this closed mouth looks like, and can calculate the in-betweens, giving us the results, which you can see here. On almost every shot, you're going to have to go back and make a few training frames in between your original ones, but it never hurts to make as few as you think you need, then train and track. Wherever the tracking is off is where you need to make another one. Again, at the frame where it's off the most. So if the tracking were to be off on this frame real badly, we'd say, okay, it's not getting this, so we'll make another training frame. Correct it. Train and track. Go back, keep doing that, and after a few passes, you should have a good and complete model of your actor, and your tracking should be great. The third thing I want to touch on is the consistency of your training frames. Now this is the most important aspect of getting good and jitter-free results. Let's take a look at the two training frames we were just talking about. This smile, and this closed mouth. If I go back and forth between the two, which I'm doing by holding control and pressing left and right arrow keys, you can see that each of the landmarks are in the same place each time. We're gonna focus on this corner just as an example. It's important because on these training frames, the software knows exactly where these corner landmarks go. Therefore, it can accurately figure out where they go in the in-between results. And your results are nice and smooth and accurate. If they're in different spots, so for example, on this smile, if they were down here-ish, and on this closed mouth, they were up a little more, the software can get confused about the exact location of the landmarks, and in the results, that'll be reflected by jittering and shaking. So you can imagine what it would look like if all of these landmarks were in slightly different spots, the whole thing would be shaking a little bit when you're playing the results back, and that's obviously not accurate and not what you want. The software doesn't know if the landmark should be here, or, you know, here or here, so it just takes a best guess on each frame. That's why consistent placement of your landmarks is just the most important thing when you're making them. The best way to prevent this is to construct your training frames in exactly the same way each time, and go back and forth between them to make sure that you're staying accurate. With experience, you won't have to do this as much, but it's a good idea to do this when you're first starting out to ensure maximum accuracy. As an example, I'll make a new training frame here. For purposes of this demonstration, we don't have a training frame here. So I'm going to turn on Intelligent Drag, which you can also do just by holding the Shift key, and I'm going to start constructing the training frame. Because we're using Intelligent Drag, it moves the whole thing. So I'm going to put my landmarks here and here, turn off tooltips real quick, and then the corners here and here, you want to keep these ones close, and we'll grab this and move it here space these out evenly in between. Then we're gonna line up the center ones here, here, and here, and do the same thing. Space these ones out evenly between 
the ones we've already placed, like so, following the lip line, same here, like so, and same thing on the inner mouth. So for here, here, here. And if we were going to create a new training frame, we would do it in exactly the same manner. We'd, we'd set it up, I tend to do the same landmarks in the same order, and that ensures that you're going to create it the same way every time with maximum accuracy. And we can go back and forth between the other one we've already created. And see that on this one I've already moved this here for our example earlier, but everything looks like it's moving exactly as it should be. So that's a good training frame, a well-constructed training frame. And that's what you're looking for. Do that for each of your training frames and keep in mind the tips that we've gone over here and you'll get the best results in the most efficient manner possible when using Analyzer.